Watson of the International Secret Police. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. Speed Gibson, acting on a hunch, is traveling in a fast police launch up the Seong River. His goal is a flower boat which the octopus used to smuggle Marsha Winfield away from Hong Kong. Clint Barlow and Barney Dunlap pursued the boat in a bullet monoplane and, with the assistance of a new friend, Bob Gilmore, stopped the boat and boarded it for the search. While they were below searching the cargo, Marsha and the opium were taken ashore and now Clint, Barney, and Bob are prisoners and about to be thrown into the Seong River. The octopus has just given the order over his shortwave set for his men to proceed, and we find the boys Come fighting on. for their lives. Oh, oh, take that! And that! And that! Oh! Hey, Barney! Bob, go! I know, Clint, and I saw the guy that hit him. I'll fix him! Stop the barbarian! Find him! He's calling us barbarians! Let me at it! Oh! Hey, Barney! Bob, you are but one fighting against all of us, Creed Marlow. Do you surrender? Oh, must we beat you down, too? Come and get me if you can. Stop. Stop. Try. Stop. Try. What is it? The police are boarding the boat. They came while everyone was down here. Police. Police. Everyone. Everyone on deck. Police are here. We must fight them off. Go. 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 Well, how'd the police get here? The nick of time, too. I guess my luck is still holding good. Now to get Barney and Bob on their feet. Hey, Barney. Barney! Barney, come on, snap out of it. Oh, oh. Oh, so you want to fight, huh? I'll show you. Ow! Big ox, you. What's the idea? Clint. Yes, Clint. I managed to hold off a mob of smugglers, and you have to sock me. <laughs> That's a good... Hey, hey, what's happened? Oh, so you finally remembered what you were doing, huh? Where's Hop Toy and his gang? Where's Bob? Hear the battle sounds? That's Hop Toy and his men fighting the police. Bob got cold. Come on, let's try to bring him around. The police? How'd they get him? How should I know? Hey, Who's that? Are you all right? Yeah, where did you come from, kid? Up the river with Lee Ying and a police launch. Well, how did you know we were in a jam, Speed? I didn't know, Clint. But I had a hunch that you'd run into trouble. Just the two of you. Three of us. The other one's on the floor. And did we run into trouble? Is that Bob Gilmore on the floor? The fellow you told me about over the shortwave set? That's right, Speed. Where's Lee Ying? Up on deck with the captain in the flower boat. The police were getting the best of things when I came down here. We sure surprised them. <laughs> you have a habit of surprising people, Steve. Even me. Didn't I do the right thing, Clint? Considering that we'd have been at the bottom of the Siang River if you hadn't come when you did, I should say you did do the right thing, kid. Uh, from our standpoint, yes. But you ran a terrible risk coming in here, Speed. It was worth any risk to get you and Barney out of trouble, Clint. Couldn't let the secret police lose his best man. I've said before and I'll say again that I'm beginning to think you're the best man of us, kid. But come on, let's try to wake up Bob and then go up on deck with Lee Yang. Yeah, all right. Hey, Bob. Bob, come on, wake up. Gee, I wonder what a guy like him is doing 200 miles up the Seong River. Uh, Bob's an engineer, Speed. Larry Winfield was his best friend. What? Does he know where Larry is now? No, but he may help us locate him. Oh, He's oh. coming around now. Oh. He was hit hard. Yeah. It, come on, Bob. It's Clint, Bob. Everything's okay. Oh, Clint? Yeah. The police, headed by my nephew here, came in the nick of time. We won't explore the bottom of the Siang after all. Oh, swell. Ooh, ooh, my jaw. What hit me, anyhow? A little guy. Couldn't have weighed more than a hundred pounds. These smugglers sure pack a wallop. So you're Speed Gibson. I guess I don't have to tell you that I'm glad you came when you did, Speed. Thanks, Mr. Gilmore. You helped Clint and Barney plenty, too. Oh, I just towed him to the bank of the river, Speed, but Hop Toy was going to sink us to the bottom. Is that what he was going to do? Uh, yeah, in boxes, weighted with some of these nails you see around you. Gosh, that, that's terrible. Everything all right, Speed? Yes, Lei Ying. Come on down. They were down here just like Hop Toy said they'd be. Did that hopping toy tell you we was down here? 
did after Lee Ying hit him. Well, my good friend, how glad I am that yeah, you are. Yeah, go on, say it, that we're still alive. Ying, this is Bob Gilmore. I'm how glad you do, uh, Lee Ying is a tea merchant in Hong Kong, Bob. I told him to keep an eye on Speed while we were away. That is so, Mr. Gilmore. Speed likes my tea room, though he generally drinks milk instead of tea. What's happening up on deck, Ying? The uh, very capable police captain and his men have subdued the crew and the Captain Hop Toy Barney. They are uh, awaiting word from you as to what you wish done with the prisoners. Well, might as well take them back to Hong Kong, the same boat they left on. That'll take care of the passengers, too. Yeah, I'll bet they're scared to death. Go out on a pleasure ship and come back on a battleship. <laughs> hey, don't you think that's funny? Uh, no. I must be losing my wit. Well, what are you going to do, Clint? Uh, I'm going to lay over with Bob here, if I may, Bob. Until we can patch up the plane enough to fly her back to Hong Kong. You bet you can, Clint. I'm only too happy to have the company. And I'll see that the plane is repaired in no time. That's right. It'll have to be fast so as we can get back and see what the octopus is up to. Can I stay with you, Clint? Uh, I don't see how, Speed. The plane only carries two passengers, you know. That's right, kid. We managed to get one of the reserve gas tanks shot full of holes. But we ain't taken it clean out yet and replaced it with a seat for you. Why don't we? Yeah, w huh? Well, as long as we're working on the plane anyhow, why can't we put in another passenger compartment at the same time? Won't take any longer, I'll guarantee that. Then Speed can stay on with you fellas. Golly, that'd be swell. Can I, Clint? Mm -hmm. I just heard Speed. Getting so I'm afraid to let you out of my sight. Way great! Will you have further need of my services, Clint? Uh, no, no, thank you, Lee. Then uh, I will return to Hong Kong on the police launch. My uh, business may suffer if I'm away from it too long. Uh, yes, I understand. And thank you for your aid. I'll get in touch with you when we return to Hong Kong. You bet. How are you feeling now, Bob? Think you can navigate those steps up to the deck? Sure, Barney. And I think the quicker we get to my house and have some food, the better off we'll all feel. Mm -hmm. Is there somewhere near where I can cable my chief, Bob? Yes, there is. Oh, good. Well, let's get up on deck then and get the formalities over with. <laughs> I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm plenty hungry. <laughs> Well, boy and man, I've eaten many a meal, but the one you just cooked up for us beats them all, Bob. <laughs> excitement certainly doesn't curb your appetite, Barney. Say, if I let excitement ruin my appetite, I'd starve to death. Well, as long as you enjoyed the meal so much, Barney, uh, you can do the dishes. Yeah. Who, me? Why, didn't you guys enjoy it, too? <laughs> <laughs> I saw we did, Barney. Clint's only kidding. Oh, uh, maybe you'd like to do them, Speed. Well, <laughs> don't worry, Speed. Nobody's going to do them. I'll just pull the whole table into the kitchen and let my houseboy worry about the dishes in the morning. Have you a houseboy, Bob? Well, three times a week. Wages are very low in China for native servants, you know. Man of reasonable means could easily afford two or three. Gee. I only have one come in three times a week because I'm in and out so much that I don't need a full-time servant. Then, two of late, my means aren't even reasonable. Having a tough time, Bob? Sort of. People don't seem to have much use for engineers lately. Afraid of war, too busy building destructive things instead of constructive. Yeah, the dopes. Maybe they'll all get smart someday and learn to get along with one another. If they don't, there won't be anybody for anybody to get along with. Uh, is he uh, standing on a soapbox speed? No, oh, I don't see one, Clint. Hmm, I'm uh, not being kidded by any chance, am I? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're all right, Barney. We can't set the world straight tonight. Now, right now, I'd like to figure out a way of working Bob into our organization if we can. Could we, Clint? That'd be great. Oh, it'd be more than great. I can't think of any job I'd like better, Clint, particularly since Marsha's involved. I won't rest until I've found her I think I'd have a better chance of finding her through your organization than if I went alone. And how? You'd never stand a chance against the Octopus Gang alone, Bob. Look at the trouble the secret police is having, and we're a world organization. Well, see, Bob, uh, how long did you know Larry Winfield? Uh, where'd you meet him? I knew him about a year, Clint. Met him in Hong Kong right after I landed. I came to China full of enthusiasm. I'd been told that the country was wide open for engineers... That China was at last awakening from her long sleep and was anxious to progress along modern lines as fast as possible. It sounded great, but after I got here, I had to add a lot more than a grain of salt. Couldn't you find a job, Bob? Yes, I could find jobs, all right, but they weren't good jobs. I mean, they'd ask me to draw up a set of plans that were impossible, and me, fresh out of engineering school, would always tell them that they were impossible. 
So the job would fall through. Oh, a good deed a day in that case kept the paycheck away, huh? Yes, because less scrupulous engineers were snapping up such contracts, and the backers paid good money to learn their mistakes. Uh, one night, when I was particularly low, I met Larry Winfield. Started talking, learned we were in the same game, and, well, it wasn't long before I told him everything. Well, if Larry was anything like Marcia, I can understand that. I'll say so. This Marsh is just about the most understanding person I've ever met. Uh, Larry Winfield was one of the best. He had the very soul of honor. Wouldn't touch a crooked deal with a ten-foot pole. And he was all enthusiasm about his job with the Merritt Oil Company. The Merritt? Yes. Funny me remembering that name. I thought I'd forgotten it. Larry told me about their plan to survey Tibet and was going to try and take me along as his assistant. Meanwhile, he found me a job with another company, which was to keep me going until the expedition started for Tibet. We became great pals. He told me a lot about his sister, Marcia. And then one day... The octopus. Hey, that radio isn't on, is it, Bob? I didn't think it was. Bob, Gilmore, you escaped me once. I see now it was a pity. Your future good health depends on you. Or I should say, on your very bad memory. You can't frighten me, octopus. Perhaps not now, when you are seated with the secret police. But you have had a narrow escape today, Gilmore. If you continue your story about Lawrence Winfield, I shall strike again. And next time, you will not escape. It's bluff, Bob. Don't let that big devil fish scare you. He failed today, he'll fail again. Yes, Clint, I failed, thanks to Speed Gibson. But remember this. The more you seek Marsha Winfield, the further away she shall be from you. Bob Gilmore... This girl's life depends on your bad memory. Think well before you speak again. 